If you have learned the basic calculus, you might have encountered the famous problem about rolling a circle over a straight line. More specifically, you follow a specific point on a circle and investigate how the position of that point changes. For example, consider rolling a circle with radius 1 over the x-axis and let us focus on the movement of a point on the circle whose initial position is 0, 0. As the circle rolls, this point on the circle generates this red curve that you're currently watching, which is called the cycloid. And we do the bunch of fun mathematics stuff with this cycloid, such as finding the equation of the cycloid, calculating the length of a cycloid, or calculating the area under a cycloid, and so on. But in this video, let us do something different. Instead of rolling a circle over a line, let us roll a line over a circle. More specifically, consider a unit circle with its center at the origin and consider a point on the line whose initial position is 1, 0. Then, as the line rolls over the unit circle in a counterclockwise direction, this point will also change its position on the xy plane as shown in the figure. And if this point leaves a trace as it moves, it will generate this red curve as the line rotates around the circle. You know, just like the previous case of generating a cycloid by rolling the circle along the line. In this setting, we want to do two important things. First, can we find the coordinates of this moving point at any moment during the motion? That is, a generalized expression for the position of this point. Secondly, can we find the length of this red curve generated by that moving point after the line makes one full rotation around the circle? So let's start with the first part. Part 1. Finding coordinates. Here, let us assume the situation where the line has rotated on the circle by angle T. That is, if we connect the origin O with the point of tangency, that line will make an angle T with the positive x direction. And here's the initial position 1, 0, which we will call P0. This point on the line is now moved to this point P and let x, y be its coordinates. What we want is to find the coordinates of point P. Moreover, we have to use this point of tangency T and it is easy to notice that this point can be expressed as cosine t, comma sine t. Now let us calculate some length. When the line rolls on the circle, the length of the line segment tp, which is the distance between the point of tangency and the point on the line which was initially located at 1, 0, is equal to the arc length tp0, the equivalent length along the circumference of the circle. And since the arc length can be calculated by radius times the angle, we have radius 1 times angle t in radians, which simply gives t. So this arc length is t, and this length is t. Next, in order to find the position of p, first let us find the direction vector of the line tp, which is this vector v. Here, notice that this vector v is essentially this vector ot rotated clockwise by angle pi over 2. This means that line tp and correspondingly vector v make an angle minus pi over 2 plus t with the positive x direction. Therefore, we can pick our direction vector v as cosine minus pi over 2 plus t, comma, sine minus pi over 2 plus t, which gives sine t, comma, minus cosine t. Meaning that whenever x changes by sine t, y changes by minus cosine t. Another neat thing about this direction vector v is that its norm or magnitude is 1. In other words, vector v is a unit vector. 
Now we want to find the coordinates of point P or this position vector OP. And this vector OP can be obtained by this vector OT plus this vector TP. Here vector OT is given as cosine t comma sine t and vector tp is in the same direction as direction vector v but the direction vector v has length 1 since it is the unit vector whereas vector tp has length of t therefore vector tp is t times the unit vector v so we have cosine t comma sine t plus t times sine t comma minus cosine t which gives cosine t plus t sine t comma sine t minus t cosine t or using x and y we have x equals cosine t plus t sine t and y equals sine t minus t cosine t and of course t should be greater than or equal to zero so this is how we find the exact location of point p at any moment now let's move on to the next part when the line made one full rotation around the circle what is the length of the curve generated by point p Alright, so first, this is the expression for the coordinates of point P we have just obtained. This is also called the parametric equation or parametric curve because it is expressed using the parameter t. The length of the parametric curve can be calculated by this formula. The length L is given as the integral of the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared and the interval is from 0 to 2 pi because during the first full rotation our parameter t changes from 0 to 2 pi. So first we have to obtain dx over dt and dy over dt. These are simple derivatives and if you calculate them, you will obtain dx over dt is t times cosine t and dy over dt is t times sine t. Therefore, the length of the curve is integral from 0 to 2 pi square root of t cosine t squared plus t sine t squared dt which gives integral square root of t squared times cosine squared t plus sine squared t dt and since this is 1 we simply have square root of t squared and since t is non-negative we simply have integral t dt which gives 2 pi squared And that was all for today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in another video.